Retail and hospitality is changing. With often complex and fragmented systems, combined with large volumes of customer data for businesses to make sense of, it's critical to work with the right partners in order to guarantee success. At Tratech Consulting, we help retail and hospitality businesses transform their technology, removing overly bloated processes and creating unified and efficient systems of working throughout. So don't just take our word for it. See for yourself. Tratech Consulting, the leaders in technology transformation across retail and hospitality. Hello, good evening and welcome to the All Things Borough podcast. I'm Alan. I'm joined here, and it's been a couple of weeks now, I'm here with Simon. Hello, Simon. Go on, go on, speak. I know you're not feeling very well. Uh, good evening. Yes, I'm a bit croaky. <laughs> kiss, yeah, kiss so you've caught the, the dreaded lurgy off your son. I have, yeah. Kiss, uh, kissing too many frogs as well, it could be that. But uh, yes, I've, 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 I might have swallowed one because it's in, in the middle of my throat at the moment. But there we are. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, happy days. Yeah, I'm all right. Thank you very much. Other than that, all good. Uh, nice, easy day at work. Good. So, happy days. Back to the grind tomorrow. Full, full day in court. Lovely. Uh, are you are you good? <clears throat> yes, yeah, good. Yeah, I only got a little bit wet today. Um, miserable yeah, we don't, day. We don't, we don't know about your personal life, mate. Let's just get a crack. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> it's been a bit. It's been, the weather's been a bit miserable this last sort of week, week and a half. So, um, especially yeah. up here in Bedfordshire, it's been absolutely it's been biblical. As a regular, uh, regular followers will know that uh, Alan loves a weather report. So uh, yeah, if you, just, if, you, if you tune in, tune in about they now. They need to know. They need to know yeah. that, 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 that <clears throat> the residents of Bedfordshire we've nearly drowned this last week. Yeah, they didn't get they didn't get the uh, the one that they wanted. They, did they? You're still around. So, no, uh, no, yeah, it's no, shame. shame. No, exactly. And then, and I'll, I'll tell you that because you was up here last week as well, Simon. That four a four two one is still underwater. Yeah, the, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we did do a bit of um, just so uh, just follow anyone that follows our lives or just follows me generally. Um, there's quite a few of you. Too many. Um, there's uh, <laughs> um, we went, went to Real Bedford versus Leighton Town the other week on Friday. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Then we went to yeah. uh, we, 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 we were done on Saturday. Oh yeah, Hemel Hempstead, wasn't it? Hemel yeah, Hempstead, yeah, yeah. And we went to Hemel Farm, bro. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was a good. That was a good game, and all that was. That was, was a good game. That was a brilliant yeah. game. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. Yeah, three three. Great result. That. Yeah, good, it was good. Good result, and it was good. Nice, uh, good game as well. To be fair. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And and the, and the sun came out. I think it was the last time anyone saw the sun. Actually, it was about three weeks ago. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. when we was at that, we was at that game. It was like, like you said, it was the sun was out. It was really hot. And then uh, when I got home, Angela, my missus, told me that it was raining here in Leighton Buzzard the whole time that we was uh, we was in Hemel. Yeah, it says it all, doesn't it? it says it all. Uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway now, now um, well, we need to get off the uh, get off the Met Office uh, stuff. Or else we're going to get uh, get billed. Yeah. <clears throat> And yes, I, know got, so. I know I've got the looks of looks of a weather man, but uh, probably not the voice. Uh, yeah, yeah, don't forget, I can still mute you. <laughs> uh, right, yeah. So we've got a guest here tonight. To everybody that's watching us on YouTube, thanks for watching us again. Uh, we, we have got a, a, a guest on tonight. It is Ben Murray, who is uh, you're the uh, academy director. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, academy director. And uh, Hatley, is, it, is this the role that you've held for 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 long or? Yeah, so myself and Leo. Uh, Leo is also a academy director at the club. Um, been there since, well, it was the, just before COVID hit. So it was obviously good luck charge right, right. when we started on that. So we've been there a few years now. Oh, yeah. Um, I, we, yeah, we took it over in back in the 2019. Oh, OK, OK, nice. And what, and what, was, it, what was you doing before, before that then to, to get this role? So in the football world, I was, I was, man, I was manager at Ashford Town, um, who was step four. We're in the issue yeah. in South now. Um, took those guys over back in 2013. I was only young then, not young anymore. But um, but yeah, started in 2013, managing, did that for six years. Uh, sort of built, helped build the club from the junior section all the way up um, with a young group of players and got them promoted up and then kept them at step four. Um, and then after that, I just sort of just wanted a bit of a break, really. And within two weeks of having a break, uh, Spencer rung me and said, would you be interested in coming on board of the coaching team? So then did a year of a year or a season, the, the season that ended early through the COVID mm. um, was, was in as the, the coach uh, for the first team there. Um, so then finished there, uh, then went to Northwood uh, for 10 games. Wasn't the best place. 
Um, and then uh, went, I'm at Burnham still now. So that was three and a half years ago. Um, so now manager at, at Burnham at step five. So, uh, and that's going well, getting a young group. Um, but the time that I was doing the uh, coaching with the first team, uh, I spoke with Rob and he just sort of went, look, have you thought about getting involved with our academy? Uh, yeah. And then had a look at it and I turned up and there were seven lads there. So they didn't even have enough for a team at the time. Uh, and there was a coach that was a, a rugby coach, big South African guy. Uh, he was I a lovely love. guy, but he had no clue about football. And he was quite, he, he was honest about that. He, he kind of went, look, I have yeah. no clue what I'm doing in the football field. I said, well, you can't do a lot with seven people. So I said to Rob, look, okay, let's, uh, let's go for this. I'm happy to take it over if you want me to take it over. So we started with the seven, finished that sort of year off. And then we had literally five weeks to try and recruit to get ourselves up above 11. And we managed to get 15. Um, so we got through that first year and then have just kept building and building. So we've had over, what, 75 lads through now since 2020. Um, what, and what age group are, are they then? So it's 16 to 18. So basically it's a, it's a college programme. Uh, so right, it's, okay. it's half and half, half education and, and half football. Uh, so you mm-hmm. do 12 hours of, of BTEC per week. Mm-hmm. So it ends up, and the BTECs have changed now. So the BTEC, the BTEC that they do is worth three A-levels at the end of it. Um, so it's a two-year programme. It's exactly the same if they were to go into mainstream college. Um, yeah. And uh, my other, the reason why it worked quite well is because I was a teacher. Uh, so I do the, the teaching side of things. Um, and used to be doing the coaching things. I don't get out of the training field as much anymore. Um, so Leo and, and we've just got a new member of staff who was George, George Butler, who used to play for, but he came through the academy. Yes, yeah, I recognise the name. Yeah, he, he yeah. Played, a, played one or two senior games in the last season. <laughs> Yeah, he walks around with a picture of the Hampshire Cup all the time, the time when we used to <laughs> yeah. take it seriously. Uh, yeah, that's glory his, days, yeah. Glory that's days. his phone yeah. picture all the time. He's got a picture <laughs> of him holding that I, cup. I, I do the same thing with my most improved player at Derby Green Dynamos myself. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, so, yeah, so they, they, those guys take control of the, the coaching and on a match day we all come together and and uh, we've had a really good start to the season so far, three out of three in the, in the, the three games that we've had. So, yeah, things are going well. And is it in sort of in, con- in conjunction with uh, what college is it? Palmer Six One College? No, so we do it for ourselves. So um, oh, okay. it's through an education provider called Virtual Learning, uh, yeah. or VLUK. So basically, uh, I'm kind of, I oversee the the campus, if you like, um, and the learners that we've got. So we've got 30, 30 players involved mm. in the group at the moment through two year groups, um, and oversee oversee what happens from their education and their, and their football point of view, uh, along with Leo. Um, but yeah, the BTEC is delivered from us up, up in the Platinum Lounge. So it's a bit oh, weird right. on the match day when you see the Platinum Lounge being used like, like it should do and it's like it's our classroom during the day. It's a bit weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, all the teaching is done in the Platinum Lounge. And then uh, we do the, the coaching either out on, on Moor Row. We get to play our matches on the, on the stadium, which is great. Um, but we're either out on the Hello Turf or Moor Road or we've got the 3G down at Cove that we use sometimes. So yeah, yeah it's all good. When, so when you're using the platinum, have you still got Trevor behind the bar? Or is he? Uh, or is he not there? Yeah, no, he's there all the time. He just doesn't go home. Yeah, <laughs> thought, no, yeah. no, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have it all. Uh, luckily, we have it all partitioned off, yeah. so that uh, yeah. the lads don't get a, yeah. an iron for it while they're while they're learning. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't yeah, help me because like, I can see it still. I know what's behind there. Yeah, but... <laughs> you're trying to keep the, to get the conversation, the uh, concentration levels going. Yeah, yeah. well, you mean myself and Alan used to play down at Moor Road when you played for a. A couple of pub teams that we trained down there a few That's times. A long, so, yeah, a long time ago now, Simon, yeah. Yeah, it's a few years. <laughs> the back, back, yeah. of, back of my memory somewhere. It's yeah. okay this time of year, but you talk about the rain earlier on. Uh, mm. It doesn't really help that surface over there. Yeah, it's no. a bit foggy, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah. but no, it, it's good, and, and the, lads are, the lads are great, and they're all homegrown. They're, they're, they're all within sort of five, six miles of, of Farnborough, so that's really, yeah. really good. Um, the idea being that we, we treat it like we would do uh, an academy set up where we want them to be as as professional as they can so they all go on sort of um exercise and uh, strength conditioning plans keep forgetting myself I'm, you can tell i'm not one um but they do the strength conditioning plans they they sort of see all the different careers they can go down so it's actually a, a degree in sports coaching that they do right. um so we get a lot of guest speakers come in uh and as i say it, it it shows it in itself that we've got one of our lads who's now finished is now one of our coaches um, yeah. So yeah. So that's just that's even better. How do you how do you go about some um, recruiting the players? How do you how do they how do they come through? 
So social media is massive now, isn't it? So uh, that's quite a big, big uh, pull for us. But we do trial days. So our first trial day is going to be next month. Uh, we're just looking around the, the fixtures of when that's going to be in and that'll be put out onto the, the socials. Uh, and we kind of do one trial day per month on the pitch. Uh, and it's almost like an open evening, if you like. Back at school, mm. you had the open evenings. And yeah. uh, we get the lads in, we show a training session, like an open training session, and then the, the prospective guys can come and, come and play in a trial game and, and we sort of go from there. Um, so is it, is it um, so you basically, when you get these players in, obviously you're basing them um, on their football and ability. Is it all around that or is it, or is it also to do with the educational side of things or, or a bit of both? It's a bit of both. So the entry criteria is that they need to have four GCSEs, which in old money is A to C, uh, but now is level four or above. So, but there are sort of mitigating circumstances on that. Don't get me wrong. I've got a six foot four centre half that's just missed out on his maths by one grade. Then we're probably going to let him in. No, but, um, <laughs> yeah. but there, there's a lot of mitigating st- circumstances around it. But yeah, that is the entry criteria that they're going to continue with education and and uh, and they've got an eye for for something they want to do. Because at the end of the day, if they do make it pro, which would be fantastic for everybody, then we've obviously done our jobs and everyone's done, and they've yeah. done their job, but they have to have that other avenue to fall back on um, as you would do in any, in any walk of life. So yeah, it's a bit of both really the entry criteria for, for the education side, but also from the football side, we, we do have a, a level of, of player that we try and look for. And, and the idea, right, is the perfect pathway is to get players into the first team. No, absolutely, yeah. And uh, are there any players currently in the squad that, that are looking to go that way into the first team? I don't know, we've lost, we've lost your audio. There you go, no, it's come off. Uh, sorry, yeah, my AirPod finished. Uh, yeah, no, we've got a couple that we're looking at, and at the moment they're doing really well. Uh, it's obviously early days for us, so we start a little bit later. So we don't really get the boys back in until the middle of August because uh, they're all on summer holidays and, and stuff like that. Mm. So uh, we're kind of coming towards the end of the first month. A lot of our first years, our first year group is strong. We've got a good couple of centre, a good goalkeeper, a good centre half. Uh, and then with our year two group, our second years, we've got lads that, that are playing step five and six football at the moment, going out and getting some minutes um and and just sort of getting their education down that route go and get a clip around the ear and a and a dodgy shin the next morning so they can understand how men's football works um and then then yeah we we try and get as many in to to have a look at i think the the issues can be that the first team's doing so well so at the end of last year it was difficult to because it up until yeah. the very last game it was like we could be in playoffs here and we're pushing for that so it's not really a time to be able to 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 breed in some or blood in some some youngsters at that point, uh, which I can fully understand. So um, there's other avenues. I think I'm, I'm sure that we're going to talk about the Hampshire Cup at some point about the academy and things like that. Um, and I know for next season that that's going to be a game that we will take take ownership of um, in, in in that respect to try and to try and show everybody one what yeah. we do and two what what sort of quality of lads we've got to be able to push with with the first team football. But yeah, ultimately we're hopefully in, in the next few months, we've got some players that we can send down to go and get some experience of training, but they need to go out and get some experience against football first. Yeah. So is that I think uh, Simon, Simon's going to, yeah, Simon's going to mention this, but we, we did talk about this, uh, not on the podcast, I don't think, but uh, we did talk about this uh, between me and Simon, that last season when they did the whole fans thing with the Hampshire cup, it was, it was good fun. Um, uh, it was like a statement to the FA, to the Hampshire FA about the about messing us around and all that. Um, I trialed for it. I mean, I went, I went and and went to the training session. Unfortunately, I wasn't selected. Um, but then I don't think I would have lasted very long in the game anyway. But um, but it was a good game. Do you know what I mean it was a good game to watch? And uh, he had quite a few first team players in at the um, at the time, and we you can see that they were doing when they were, that when Farmer were winning at one point. That's when he started. Spencer started taking the the first team players off and the, and the other fans back on, and uh, and then and then they lost. But this season, when they did it again, you, know, you can't ignore a loss like that, really, can you? And me and Simon have said afterwards that I mean, I, I think I asked you, didn't I? I said to Simon, I like, why didn't they why didn't they um, use the, some of the academy players? I mean, they might be 16, 17 years old, but they'll be playing against uh, a club. That um, that they're used to playing against step five, step six football. So 
So, but it's good to hear. I don't know what you just said there that, that um, you're yeah. going to be taking ownership of that of that competition. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, last year it was a. I, I thought it was a great idea. To be honest, I thought it was yeah. it was a, a a niche idea, a novelty idea that that really worked. Um, mm. And no offense to the team, I think it's fallen sports they played. And and they were probably around the right level for that type yeah. of thing, even though. And you and you're right. There was a lot more first teamers involved that day, which kind of helped out a lot. Um, mm. The situation was a lot different this time. Tadley, I know the guys at Tadley quite well, and, and they're a good side, and they're they're going to be pushing yeah. for promotion. Uh, there's a massive jump between level like step five and step six, and there weren't many first teamers that were available at that time and the timing I can understand and, I, and I've spoken to the guys about it and, and look, it was, the timing was not ideal the Tuesday before an FA Cup um, mm. because you want to focus and you want to have two good training sessions in preparation for that so I fully understood that um, from our point of view it was kind of it is a little bit early for us this year because obviously I just mentioned we started a bit late so we didn't necessarily know our first years that well but yeah potentially we could have had one or two second years that went in and played. But again, I, I completely understand the novelty of the idea. Did it work? No. Is it something yeah. that, that that annoyed people with having to pay the money they did? Probably yes. Would it have benefited us as a whole club and a programme that we have to try and show off what we have? Yes, it probably would have done. But I think we learned from that and, and we had a conversation the week after about it for, for next year that it would be, uh, it would be a, a, a good mixture of academy boys that we can know that are ready and and show off their their talents yeah. in front of the in front of the first team coaches and and the, and the paying customers yeah it's good though. i'm glad, glad to hear that so you know we echo yeah. and it's yourself but it'd be, i think it'd be a good thing that's it like anna said we did mention it and we thought you know what a, what a good good opportunity to get some of the young players out of there playing it's a bit a good great great experience for them as well just to uh Play, yeah, absolutely, play, 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 play. and that's what it's about. It's about the experience, yeah. and and you can use yeah. again. I, I bring up George, and George was someone that the difference with George was is that he was six foot three at the age of seventeen. So he was he was he was a man in that sense mm. anyway, um, and he was I think he was quite opportune at the time. It, it was the promotion year, but he was opportune mm. at the time that he was given the opportunity. So that kind of worked. The first team had a great start. So you've got, you've got to think when, when the first team's having a great start, that's always going to have a detrimental effect about lads being able to get yeah. the opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you're five out of five, or I think that was like the start was, you're kind of like, right, this is now going to be, that's the squad and, and they're going to push mm. on. And, and rightfully so. And when you look at where they are in the league now, it, it's going to be difficult to, to blood some youngsters in at this point. Um, and especially with, with the lack of cups that, that the first team are in because the level that they are, the lower levels you are down, you've got more cups that you enter. You enter yeah, 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 yeah. Bit different. So that's why we've got the good connections with other clubs that we can get these these guys out and, and get them playing. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a shame that what happened happened between uh, the Hampshire FA and, and the club um, lost a lot two seasons ago. Um, but and like you said, it was a it was it was a, it was a good idea at, at the beginning last season when they did it. Uh, we all had a, a, a lot of fun in the training and that, um, and, the, and all the players, the lads that played, enjoyed it and, and doing pulling on the shirt, pulling on the, on the Farnborough shirt, the team that they support, and every, it's every Farnborough fan's dream. Do you know what I mean? So, but this season it was just a bit silly, I think. And um, but yeah, so yeah, so next season when you guys take over it. Uh, it's going to be a lot better. It's just it's it's good for the club to to do it that way. It's a bit right. a little bit unfortunate that that we are doing it that way because obviously we were probably one of quite a few one of the biggest the biggest so called bigger sides in the in the Hampshire Cup that were putting out a first team because all the the Eastleys and the Portsmouths and the Southamptons were only put, were filled in their under 18s and um, and well, then my, my so, point would be that. The year that that all happened, where they got frustrated with the the county, we went on and won it. So, what's better way to yeah, annoy yeah. the county is by winning the county cup. So it's yeah, just like that, that's yeah. why, and I, and I yeah. pull that up as well. Like more than capable, you just <laughs> said there to go and do well in that competition. The fans yeah. loved it that night at Eastleigh as much as we was yeah. annoyed that we had to go and play there and play them. Yeah, why. exactly. Yeah, yeah. It added a little bit more sort of spice to the game, and that showed yeah. within the game itself. So we we all enjoyed that. I remember being there. It was a great night. To be able to go, there you go. We'll take the trophy back. Now it's up. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's a case of probably a little bit of both. I think we we 
we would look to have a few first teamers in there, obviously. But again, it all yeah. depends on where the where the the first team were at and the time of the time of the game. I personally wouldn't have scheduled it the week before FA Cup and done everything you could to try and move it. But uh, that, that is what it is. Yeah. Talking of um, talking of games, Ben. Do you um, we'll go we'll, we'll revert back to first team matters now. Do you get do you get a chance to go and watch the uh, watch the Farnham uh, first team a lot, or are you too busy with your with your uh, your, your other clubs and your other? Clubs? Um, yeah, I was I was there on Friday. To be fair, um, and I try and get obviously Saturday is a bit difficult because we play on Saturdays, yeah. and uh, my home night with Burnham is a Wednesday. So any Tuesday night games at home, I know we've got Truro coming up. I'll yeah. be there. Uh, I was a bad luck charm for quite a while last season because every time I turned up, we'd have a draw or lose. Uh, it, was you. it was you. I got, it was I got me, mate. That. It was me. I, well, I got the blame for that, but I knew it was someone different. I knew it was someone else. And weirdly, <laughs> the first two or three times I did it, we had the same ref twice. And he was <laughs> terrible the first time and he was terrible the second time. So, that, again, yeah. that was my fault. So, yeah. um, But no, yeah, we try and get down to as many games as we can. Um, <clears> it's, it's, it's good to do so. I watched the Eastbourne Borough game as well, which... Oh, yeah. Yeah, which there, now, yeah. in, in terms of form, shows how good the opportunity is for the team this year because obviously Eastbourne are up yeah. there, and I was quite oh. impressed with them that night. But but yeah. Farnborough out muscled and out out thought them really. Yeah, I thought I was I've done the same thoughts as you really. I was at I was at the game. It's the first time it was a second home game. Sorry, first midweek one. And mm. uh, yeah, they played they played well. But two good goals and uh, yeah, kept 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 Eastbourne quite quiet really. Due yeah. to, mainly, mainly due to our dark arts, obviously. Um, yeah, I know. I see yeah. a lot about that. I see a lot about the dark arts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's all gonna all got a bit quiet now. He lost a couple of games. Everyone sort of uh, put that one on the back burner for the time being. So we till we uh, till we win a few games on the we trot. We start winning again, yeah. and we can use yeah. it. Yeah, yeah trying to explain yeah. to academy lads what dark yeah. arts are is quite yeah. tough. They yeah. don't really get it. It's no, like uh, isn't it, it draw, drawing with black paint, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what they kind yeah. of think it is. Yeah. But yeah, trying to trying to even when you're in an academy game and and it has to be all sort of academy based and it's all obviously yeah. fair and stuff. But you two one up with three minutes to go, stick the ball in a poxy corner. No, no, yeah. no. <laughs> why, why are we doing that? What's the point of this? And you're like, okay, yeah, yeah our car's not quite there yet, but it will be in about five years' time. Yeah, it comes, it comes with experience, isn't it? It comes with experience. When it gets money involved and they're not going to take home their full money if they don't keep it <laughs> yeah. in the corner, then it'll be different. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, right. you sound you sound like you're uh, you're uh, a, a bit of a supporter of the of the the so called dark arts. It's not really dark arts, is it? It's like every club does it. It's professional, isn't it? Being professional, it's game management. I think. Yeah. I think, yeah. You know, exactly. Yeah. We all saw Arsenal do it at Man City the other week, and, and yeah. they didn't do it. They kind of did it as much as they could and couldn't see it out. So then they're not very good at it. That's what everyone says. But it's. Yeah, I'm not a major fan of it. I'm a purist. I like to play football and I like to keep the ball on the floor and keep it moving. But there's sometimes where you can use the game management to your advantage. Um, yeah. And yeah, you have to, you have to play to your, sometimes you've got to play to your strength and you've got to play to uh, play to the, the the way the game's going as well. Sometimes, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, you know, you've exactly. Got to be, it's more more than one way to skin a cat, isn't it? So, that's uh, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. But that's it, though. Do you mean if 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 the game if the game you've only got like a couple of minutes left in the game and you're winning two one or three one, it's not really. I know that obviously your your lads or or, or want to go for it and try and get another one and keep going and keep going, which is good. It's good to see. Um, but like you say, game management. You just I, do what I do it with the team that I coach. Just just shout them. Just get it into the corner. Get it into the corner. Just hold it there. Do you know what I mean, just don't don't bother. Because yeah. when I when I <clears throat> when I played, we were doing that from minute one. So uh, you know, we, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. smash it in the corner. We couldn't score anyway, Simon. We'd draw yeah, with a good one for us. Yeah. We'll take it. We'll take a nil, nil, nil. That's just bang it in the corner. <laughs> if you're in that scenario where you're able to do that, you know you've done well in the game. So that's <laughs> yeah. I think. If you're if you're able to be uh, three one up and you can then waste some time in a corner or do whatever and make your goalkeeper go down or make subs every minute or something like that, you've earned that yeah. right to be in that position. And that's why opposition managers can't get you up because yeah. it always annoys me how managers get the ump with it when they see it happen. And it's like, well, yeah. they, they, they don't do the same thing if they're in their yeah. shoes. But, you know, and two, it's, it's your fault for being in that position because yeah. you've let your team yeah. be losing at that point. The team weren't so, good enough. Yeah, exactly. 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 And what, yeah. uh, what, um, what, le- what, what league do you got your, your, your boys playing? Is it a floodlit league? No, so they play Wednesday afternoon, so they're in the Tactic League. Um, so we've got two teams. Right. We've got, they're in... They're in the T2 and the T3, which is all geographical and above my head. Um, but um, I just know when they've got to get a minibus to go where else and, <laughs> and stuff. I don't know when we're at home and telling Kev, Kev, we've got another game in the pitch. Ooh! But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so it's a good level uh, and it's an appropriate level for them at the moment. 
we'd like to be able to one reinstate ourselves back into the FA Youth Cup because we haven't done that for a few seasons. Uh, and again, just to do with the timing. So we've said that we'd probably get them in for pre-season a little bit earlier um, and then be ready to go back into the FA Youth Cup because I think that's a great, great learning curve for them straight yeah. away. Um, and then, yeah, the thought of a midweek sort of floodlit league is a possibility. We, we can move some of our tactic league games to the evenings because um, everyone prefers playing at Farnborough under the lights because it's an unbelievable yeah. stadium when it's like that. So... Um, and we and again with our trial evenings we do that and all of the existing lads are sitting there going well, what can they do and we can't so we try and do as many games on the on the pitch under the lights as, as possible but yeah no, it's a, it's a good level um, and <clears throat> it's a different we get a lot of clubs we're, we're in the same league as Eastley um, we've got a load of pro direct teams that that are in there uh, who else Southampton have got a team in there so we, we played Red in the other week they're pretty good. Um, so yeah, it's always a good challenge. Basingstoke, all teams, all teams locally. Yeah. Are you um, well, um, I've got, got two questions ready for you, Ben. One is, um, most, are, are the games you're playing on, or mainly on uh, stadiums, or on just on just on pieces of ground, basically? Yeah, or, all our home ones are. So obviously, yeah. every team that comes straight away gets their phones out and they start giving it the whole yeah. selfies and all that because cool. it's, it's obviously a fantastic venue to play on. But most of the time, we get the opportunities to go to other clubs. So when when we go to Say Hemel Hempstead, for instance, we've been there. Uh, Haven't at Waterlooville, we've been there. Um, when we go to Eastleigh, we play on a, on a separate block, so we play at Hampshire FA for that. So it all depends really on the, on what's happening that week, um, and especially as the weather gets bad, a lot, not a lot of clubs yeah. like using the pitch. Yeah. Uh, so, mm. and I've got to be honest, I've got to thank Kevin and Phil <laughs> for that because without that, it's a big attraction to us and the players is to be able to play on on the main pitch and they treat us as if it's a first team game. They, they, they treat the pitch exactly the same and, and prepare it the same way. So it's always superb when we get to play on it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it is really good. And uh, yeah, most, most everyone like to play there to be fair. Hey, you know, what brings me on to another question? Cause obviously you mentioned a few teams there, the like Hemel and Eastleigh, they, they all play on little 4G. Uh, mm. pitches. Are you, are you an advocate for playing on 4G or would you be an advocate for getting it changed to Cherrywood? I'm an advocate for playing on it because I like to play football. So I like yeah. to keep the ball moving, a lot of short, sharp sort of passes and move the ball in the thirds. Uh, from an academy point of view, we'd absolutely love it because it means that we can train and play on the same pitch yeah. at yeah. the same time. Um, so, and and uh, I'm obviously, as I mentioned, I'm at Burnham Step 5, who, are, who have got fantastic 4G facility. So it makes a massive difference when we can train, even though, it's the same dimensions if you were training somewhere else, but it makes a massive difference to the players. Uh, I'm yeah. training on the same pitch. I'm taking the same set pieces and the same thing I'll do on the Saturday. And apparently it makes a difference, but it works. So it's like, well, yeah, if you can train and play on the same same venue, it makes a massive uh, difference. But uh, yeah. and, and as well, financially for the club, it, it would bring in a lot more opportunity to, to raise good funds. Um, but it's a difficult one, I think. I mean, they are looking at it, I think, at Farm yeah. they, they, oh, yeah. they They are wanting to do it. Um, I always joke about the fact that if you get promoted up and then promoted up again, then you've got to rip it all up. Yeah, so exactly. it's that, yeah. but then you get the funding back from, from the FA to do it. So it's, I think that happened at Sutton. Didn't really? It? I didn't realise they get the funding back. Yeah. To, I think to rip so. It up. so uh, because it was uh, with Sutton, I think they were within the, I, I mean, I might be wrong, but they were within the 10 years of it being put down. So then they obviously got promoted up and, and I think the, mm. the, the, the FA helped them out funding wise with that. Yeah, oh, it's, okay, just, it's, just the, it's just the revenue. The revenue stream is lost there, isn't it? That's the trouble. Exactly, um, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's but, a big, uh, I, I'm a big advocate for it. I like, I, like, yeah. Anna's not, not, not the same. He doesn't... Uh, I, don't, I, get, I, I get what, I get yeah. what, you're, what Ben's saying about um, like a, a revenue stream, using it as a revenue stream for the club. It, it will bring in a lot of money because it's not just the Farnborough teams that can play on it. It's, they, can, they can open it up to other teams that can, uh, in the area that can train on it and, and stuff like that. Um, so I get that, I get that, um, and uh, obviously it, it, it stops um, uh, it, it stops the um, postponing games. Sorry, um, yeah. when when it's bad weather and stuff like that. So it means that we have a continuous season for the first team, and and also obviously for the ladies as well when they when they're playing on it. Um, my my issue is is it's the injury issue. The, the, you still get you still see a lot of ankle and knee injuries. Um, and I've recently learned as well through um, through my own uh, team that um, I've been well. We've been to three G pitches, and you're not supposed to wear um, 
like long studs. No. They don't. I don't think they even like you wearing molded studs. I think they want you to. The people, the people want you to wear Astro trainers. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's really, it's really educating people about the right wearing the right footwear as well. Um, but I do still think that maybe they, they need to do a bit more work. Whoever does it in 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 improving the technology of the of 3G and 4G pitches. The, yeah, hundred percent. I, I think injuries. that's uh, use Dorkin for example. Mark hates the 3G there. He says yeah. oh, I get so yeah. many injuries from it, and all he all he likes to do is is talk about how bad it is. And it's not yeah. the best. It's been down for a while. It is not the best 3G there. Yeah. But, but then you go to other places, and it's a whole different 3G. And the longer that the 3G is, the better it is for for the the sort of the impact um, for yeah. ankles and, and knees, etc. I think. I do think it's a bit of a myth. I mean, if you take talking out, because they often do get quite a few injuries. I don't know if it's it's obviously to do with that, but it's to do with yeah. either how much you invest in the surface in the first place, or how you maintain it. Um, yeah. touch, touch wood, uh, at burn, and we don't necessarily get that many injuries from it. But it's it's a nice free G. So, but then you go to other places and someone will, will go down within ten minutes. Is it to do with that? Could that happen on a on a grass pitch? If yeah. if the grass pitch is is in the middle of winter, it, it could happen yeah, the same yeah, thing. Yeah. So yeah, but, but the other big thing for us is that, and you mentioned with the ladies team there, it, to bring the whole community together on the same pitch would be a massive difference. Um, yeah. At the moment, we're kind of with the junior academy as well, and 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 the women's team, and and the local community being able to to offer it out the club will make the footprint of Farnborough much bigger. For, for, for F Farm FC, so I think from a community community perspective, yeah. But I know that Spencer's not a big fan of three G, so uh, he, mm, yeah. I know that for a fact. Um, we've, we're working with a few players, and he's not the biggest fan of it. Although they they do train on it now, so maybe it's changed. Yeah, they do. And I think yeah, right. It, there's a big contrast at the minute with with different standards of um, of three G. I probably the biggest example is probably two clubs I've been to a fair bit. It's probably Bracknell. But their one's really good and it's new, new, really good pitch. And then, then you've got Walton and Hersham, who we played in the FA Cup of the week. It's absolutely shocking. So, yeah, um, that's yeah. the same. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Spencer, Spencer yeah. also had, a, had a, a couple of complaints about the Hemel pitch being too too hard. And that was a, that's a free yeah. day as well. Yeah, that was awful, though, wasn't it? That's, that was not very good either, was it, to be fair? I mean, when, you, when you've got the pitch the same height as some of the stands, you know it's not going to be good because, <laughs> you know, it's not great. <laughs> There's like a like a, a great big wall. You're you're just standing there. I'm I'm not the tallest, but yeah, we were <laughs> my head was just above the pitch. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it's a, <laughs> interesting. <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit. And then we can all moan about grass pitches as well, right? We yeah, we yeah. all got our favourite yeah, yeah. grass pitches yeah. to play on, and we've all got our yeah. pitches that we never want to go to again because yeah. it's that bad. So oh, yeah, well, on that on that point, actually, I saw some of the highlights for the uh, the ladies team uh, yesterday at Lippock, and I was, the gum in the goal mouth was like was like just there wasn't any grass left. It was. Uh, it was, it was all awesome. I was all flipping out with this like that now. What's it going to be like in the middle of winter? Jeez, yeah. wow, <laughs> yeah, shocking. I think they do get the they do of all the, of all the teams uh, that farm have, I think they probably get the worst of the conditions. I think some of the, some of the ladies' team pitches are, are appalling, but uh, yeah, there we go. That, that, that needs uh, that needs sorting out. So, uh, mm. yeah, there we are. Um, how does um, what I was going to get, get rolling back full circle to what we we uh, were to talk about is um, how does one uh, one get involved in your in in a farmer academy if they've got kids and how do they get involved with it? How does it work? So obviously from year eleven onwards, although we do get a lot of year ten, so fifteen. Um, but when, once they're in, they, they show interest. But once they're in year eleven, uh, as I say on our socials, we've got a farmer uh, football club academy page, uh, and we've got a Twitter account as well. Um, mm -hmm. Then they can get involved in that. They can message through that. But we're actually this week, so we're setting up for next month of when the first trial date will be. We're just obviously just checking in with the club about when that can be. Um, but we're put an open interest form on there, so people then can come through and and show interest. Um, and and it's and boys and girls, right? That, that, that's the thing as well. We had a, a bit of interest. I had a phone call with a parent the other day saying, "Well, my, my daughter is really interested about coming, but she doesn't want to be the only girl." And you're like. Okay, that, that's I completely understand that, but come down, and then I'm sure that mm. then through the thing, and we'd love to have a, a girls' academy team. That, that's mm. that's something that we'd really like to push, and and through the education provider we've got, they're they're really trying to push that as well because it's it's right. It, the only problem with that at the moment is that if you have a team, there might only be three or four teams because they're only setting up as well, and it's yeah. a long travel towards going and playing and stuff. But now from from 
from our perspective, it's it's about them getting involved in the socials, um, declaring an interest about being involved, uh, and then coming down to the trial day and and showing us what they got. When's your uh, when's your latest trial day, Ben? You mentioned it earlier. What day is it? Uh, we haven't got the date set yet, so right. uh, probably something that I should have had set before I come on here. To be fair, so that would have been really good. But uh, no, we'll we'll post it out, and if you guys can. Yeah. That around. Oh really yeah, happy. yeah, yeah. yeah we next... regularly regularly repost and retweet everything that, that any of the Farnborough uh, socials do. Um, for, as we as we're part of the club as well. But um, do you ever are you are you part of the um? Because obviously the, the the ladies team they've got um, uh, their own sort of academy pathway, uh, for for girls, for young girls. And um, I believe that I um we had like Craig and Leanne on a couple of weeks ago, and didn't Leanne coaches um like an under. 15s or something like that, under 16s. Are you guys sort of working in conjunction with them as well to, to help each other yeah. with the top boys? Absolutely. And we did the same with the Junior Academy uh, under 16s team from last year. Um, we we offered them, we went down to one of their training sessions and, and took a session for them. And and then we, we said, look, we want you then to come down to our first trial. So we'll be actively 100% be wanting to do that. And we'll be speaking to, uh, to Lorraine and and things mm. to try and arrange that from happening because we, for, I think the thing for us is that we're on site every day. We're, we're full time, so we're there from Monday yeah. to Friday. But we're there at the times that no one else is there. So then yeah. we're not at the times we're not there at the times that everyone else is. So we're kind yeah. of then a little bit separated from that point. But we yeah. want to try and get together with everybody. And and I have mentioned about having more meetings together with with the relevant groups, junior academy ladies, and things like that to try and to try and pull us together to to push the club because it's just got it's a it's a massive massive footprint um that we can stamp out with fun yeah, yeah i mean it's been really good it's, it, the push the push for the academy wise um it's been massive over the last what 12 to 18 months um especially on, on, on like especially on the, like the female side where they've started up the the female pathway and that yeah um so yeah, so it's, it's it's massive for the for the club and it's massive, like I said earlier, it's massive for the community as well to get involved. Yeah, yeah, I, I have to say over the last um, that's like I've said after the last over the last couple of seasons, really, I think yeah, it seems to be like clubs, uh, teams in different different age levels all popping up all over the place from Farnborough, which is really good. So uh, I think there was a spell when uh, a few years ago when you, you literally you just had the first team and that was it, really, it wasn't any anything. But so now it's uh, it's it's really progressing well. So it's yeah, it's good. So we're, we're yeah, keeping on the. Uh, good that, that, so when I came in with the first team and and sat down with the club, I wasn't just interested in that particular role, and then ended up with with the opportunity to do the academy. But we sat there and said, "Look, have you got a junior section? Well, we've got a, a Farnborough juniors that are part of our club, but they're not part of our club." Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Right, okay, it's a whole separate thing." And obviously, I, I didn't know about that. Um, so then we kind of went, well, why can't we set up a junior academy? And then we, we sat down and, and spoke to, to the relevant people and, and we got it going. And, and that's what it's about. You, you have to have, you look at all of the, the clubs that have done well in the last few years, they've all got a boom in junior section. And yeah. one that can only help out financially with the club, um, it can only help out with sponsorships, but also it can help out on the gate. And if you get a young lad, and, and to be fair, when you do come to, when you go and watch Farnborough, there are a lot of young lads that come and watch, and girls that come that come and watch yeah. the games, and they're all in their Farnborough shirts. I think that's superb now that yeah. we can get that straight off O'Neill's and and bang, and it, it's in your mm. in your front room in a week's time. It's like that's like that's what it's like in the top divisions, and, and yeah. I think that's that's what's good. And, and the first team players are great with the with the kids. Like, they're always there signing things and 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 mascots coming onto the pitch, which I think is massive. Um, yeah. They they allow our academy lads in for for free, which is great. And our academy lads are getting all of their, their kit and equipment. Um, that's exactly the same as the first teams this week. So that's massive. Yeah. So it's like, guys, now, now they feel like that they're their first team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 They just need to grow a couple that's a, of That's feet. a big thing. That's a big thing for, for young, young, young uh, lads or, or even girls when they're, when they're getting that kit or that, or that training kit. Uh, or the track suits and that, and, and it's exactly the same as what the first team get. It doesn't matter where what level the first team up. That's that's the level that they look up to. Yeah. And so when they get that, they're they're thinking, go oh, look, I've got. Look, I look like Ricky Holmes, or this is exactly. what I'm doing. This is what Reggie. This is what Reggie Young wears. I mean, so, yeah, some people they get the same size as Reggie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you need to get, get squad numbers bring it, brought in next that'd be next I'll have, uh, I'll have 99 Watson on the back of mine you know not my favourite ice cream well that's that's been the, the debate this week is uh, or last week was obviously they're getting their academy kit and they're getting the match day shirts the same and they're sort of all squabbling about what numbers they can have and we kind of went look what we'd like to do is we'd like to have a revolving thing so the first team finish at, at number I think it's number four, uh, 30 and we've got anybody higher than yeah. 30 in the, in the numbers so we said look we're going from 31 onwards well I thought that would be straightforward you know and, and like don't worry about just yeah. alphabetically give numbers out oh no I, I, don't, <laughs> I want this number can I have 52 because yeah. it's what so and so was four years ago before he was a pro and you're like, geez, so now you go back to the drawing board and doing a yeah. revolving wheel to pick it up or in a dartboard yeah. or something. But yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, a, I'm a striker, so I want five, five and four on the back because five plus four makes nine, doesn't it? So all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All the weirdest algorithms yeah. that you can think yeah. of. These guys oh, like, like 91, because 90 minus one is eight, and that's my favorite number. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, minus, I think, um, I think uh, oh, Ronaldo, Brazilian Ronaldo, he did it when he was at Inter, didn't he? He had like, Nine plus one or something, or not? Or, yeah. or, or, or that was like, um, Ivan Zamorano was a prime example of Inter. He had, he had, not, he had nine plus one. That's on it, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's really double He's going to get them, uh, cost more money to put the plus on the back of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, you've got uh, a of worms there, Ben. Yeah. So this will be, I think the, the only person who will be annoyed with it will be Mike because he's the one that prints them, isn't he? Correct, yeah. 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 Imagine Mike, Mike sticking all the pluses on the back of the shirt. So I'll get <laughs> <in> the monitors. <laughs> Just quick question mark. You leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Happy days. Right. Well, 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 we'll keep an eye on the socials in the next few weeks. Anybody's anybody's interested? Anybody that's listening up? Anybody? Parents, kids who are uh, listening? We, we've got thousands of thousands of listeners um, that um, that want that will probably probably mm. jumping at the bit already. Uh, we'll we'll get it on the socials and we'll we'll, we'll reach yeah. it. We'll fine, so we'll just tag us in, Ben, and we'll uh, we'll get them. Uh, we'll get it out there. So if we get a few uh, a, a few decent numbers, the next uh, the next Cole Palmer coming through the uh, the Farnborough Academy. Of any luck? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So before before we go, um, we'll go up a little bit off off Farnborough. Um, you said that you're managing um, Burnham. Is it Burnham Town? Burnham, yeah, just Burnham FC, yeah. But just Burnham FC. Uh, they set five. What league are they? What league are they in? So in a combined county is north. Um, uh, right, okay, yeah. It's quite local to around here. We've got, like in the south, there's fleet, obviously, that are local to, to Farnborough and, and things. But yeah, yeah we're, in, we're in the north. Um, we've actually got, we're doing okay. We've got a very young group. Uh, average age is about 20. So, uh, but it, it suits us, our style. We've got the three Gs. We like to play. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's going well. It's, it's good. It's good. Uh, sometimes it's a bit tiring after you've had a full day of, of football with Farnborough and the one thing everyone always says to me is that you must love it that you're full-time in football so then yeah. you're like well yeah I actually absolutely do but sometimes the last thing I want to do is come home and and start watching it on the TV because I say to yeah. someone if you're an accountant do you ever go <laughs> home and watch accounting on your TV you know, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. and they look at you a bit weird and then they're like actually yeah fair enough fair enough but yeah. um but no they're, they're a great group and and it's a team that we've progressed up we, we took them over when they were not doing too well and and now we were just missed out in the playoffs last year won the league cup so now it's trying to get promotion up to, to step four um but we look we moved a lot of players on with it with it being young group we moved a lot on to, to sort of uh, step three and step four we had one that signed for signed for Millwall and a 23s oh, well. contract so yeah we were really pleased with that so hopefully that continues yeah, the shame is no transfer fees, and uh, you know, obviously, being being the agent, you get a bit. I of know, that, I know. Just ten percent would have been nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah lovely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the the combine county is um, Prem North, as you said. Uh, so there's, there's some yeah. good good sides in there. And because um, I, I um I host a radio show on Sunday nights in in um, Buckingham, and we uh, there's a few teams <clears> in Buckinghamshire <throat> that um play in the combine counties. He, he, always, he always plugs his and radio show, Ben. He always right. plugs it every week. You know? <laughs> I see what you're saying. He just got to go, he's got to go, go <laughs> over it. Just uh, glaze over and say, yeah, 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 move on. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, I know that there's a few, quite a few good teams in there. I think one in your division, Amersham, Amersham Town. Well, yeah, uh, they just, are. Just got knocked out of the FA Cup tonight. by Taunton. That's who I've got are tomorrow you? night. So, yeah, we've Have got you? at Amersham. So, uh, oh, is it? I'm hoping that they're... Uh, Still... Is that, are they still doing their slightly earlier kickoffs for evenings? Because uh, 
seven thirty kickoffs, doesn't it? Because the, the residents don't like the late the late night with the lights. Yeah, it is seven thirty kickoff, which is not great for us trying to get there. But it is no, it's not. Is. No, I think that's it's one it's of the reasons why they do it. Yeah, exactly. It's only fifteen minutes, and it's a massive difference. But no, yeah, they're, they're no, fine. Definitely. They've had a good, good few weeks, and uh, we we saw them a couple of weeks ago, and uh, know just, about they them. They just got knocked out. They got knocked out of the FA Cup over the weekend by Taunton. They were one and up at last time. Yeah, they were yeah, they were. yeah. And, that, and, that's, and the, the guy that scored their goal, Jake Table, is definitely one you need to watch out for. <laughs> I know, He's I know. Banging them in the last couple of seasons. Contracted player at step. Well, he was a contracted player at step six. Now he's still contracted. Yeah. Five, but yeah, so. yeah, yeah. When they, yeah, when they were step six, they, 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 they signed them to a two-year contract. Yeah, um, but I a, think a lot they, of money. Yeah, well, yeah, they've they've had a lot of money go through the, coming in there for the last over the last couple of seasons. They've done really well, to be fair, um, and especially with Jake as well. Um, so he's definitely one to watch. I think last season he was he had trials at um, Wickham Wanderers. Yeah, which um, obviously no, I don't think anything. Obviously nothing happened, um, but he's he's still flying at the minute. But there's a lot of money at the level now, and 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 even yeah. at step five level, you've got players and and young players, and this is what frustrates me. Right, so we've got a young group. Obviously, work with the academy lads all day, and you like these lads need to earn their stripes first, and that's an yeah. old school. I'm an old school type manager, but try and play the kind of new generation style of play. So. Uh, you're getting players in the summer and the market was mad. You, you're kind of asking a centre midfielder who's 20, 21, how, how much do you want a week? Well, where have you been? Oh, I've mm. been here. In other words, you've been to a training session and you nick their training kit and you turn yeah. up in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, I, and I want 150 quid, 200 pounds to come and play per game. And you're mm. like, no. What? And, but clubs are doing it. Clubs yeah. are paying. And, and, yeah. and Farnham are obviously haven't helped them, that cause because they're paying out a lot of money, but they're doing fantastically yeah. well and they, they get it yeah. back through all of their social streams. And I think what they've done there is fantastic. Um, but they haven't helped the cause with young players now thinking that, well, I'm going to go and play this level, but I want this amount. And I know yeah. the cost of living is bad, but paying 150 quid for a, for a kid basically to, to come onto your football pitch is, is crazy. Um, yeah. and another, another team up, up here near, near where I live um, that, again, like you say, hasn't helped that sort of situation is Real Bedford. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They stand, I mean, they uh, stormed through step six. Yeah. Uh, because the guy that, the guy that took, over, took, them over, took over them, he bought them out. He's a self-made Bitcoin millionaire, whatever you want to call him. Um, he generated, just within his first few weeks of him being there, generated nearly three quarters of a million pounds just in sponsorship yeah. for the club. And that allowed him to set a really good budget for, for players and they were bringing in step three, step four players to come and play at step six for two, three hundred quid a week and yeah. they just breeze through step six, breeze through step five and now they're almost bre pretty much breezing through step four at the minute. Um, so, yeah. I mean, fair play to them. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's their plan. That's fair play. Do you know what I mean? Um, but the I same think... Walter and Urshan were the same. So Walter and Urshan, yeah. those guys took them over step six, five, now they're, now they're up to step three. It's like, yeah. and, and they've gone with the the sort of the breed of, of playing the right way and doing things the right way. And I know a lot of them players moved to Kingstone and, and things like that with, with what happened, ever happened with the manager. But the guy that's in there now likes to play what you guys saw the other week. He likes to play football a, a particular way. And and I think if you've got a, a, a five-year plan of what you want to do, I don't care how much money you've got. Fair enough, go and do it. Yeah. But yeah. as a player, in a player's perspective, I think players have got to earn that right to be in that position. Yeah. Those clubs yeah, are yeah. Only going to go for yeah. those players because they know of yeah. them at what they've done. Yeah. Probably higher up, Harry Cooksey, yeah. for example, yeah. was a Farnborough. Yeah. Rightfully, was able to be an offered guy. Hollis was offered a lot of money to go to Farnham. They did that, and then they, I mean, with with uh, a couple of them, I think they wanted to get into the FA Vars final and, and things. Yeah. And then that's mm. that's a goal. It's a, a good way to get to Wembley. It's great for the for the club. Absolutely fair play on that front. They've earned that stripe because of what they've done yeah. in the past. Um, and the club is is clearly sustainable. It's the clubs that do it, throw loads of money at it, are still sitting mid table because of the way the clubs run and, and everything else. And then they get to the end of a season, it's like, well, what do we do now? I'm just going to do it again. It's like, wh why? What, what, what do you get out yeah. of it? Yeah, so it's, a, so um, it's a slippery slope. I mean, me and Alan have had lots of conversations about it. And there's a, there's so many clubs that are right in in financially in the red. Um, yeah, and un, you know, under, underperforming with what they've got because they're overpaying for people, and mm, uh, yeah. and they're, they're they're massively struggling, and they, they end up going to the wall. It's going to be. I think 
Look at Hampton. Good. Hampton and yeah. Richmond did it last yeah. season. And now, and now this, and now, I mean, they've got a, a certain off-field things that are going on behind the scenes uh, that obviously we won't talk about. But uh, it means that they, that meant that this season that they, they, their budget is severely slashed, and they can't, right. they can't pay. Rainers Lane, Rainers Lane, another one of Rainers um, Lane, yeah. Rainers Lane, Lane, yeah. Lane, yeah. Lane, yeah. Lane yeah. They've banked a lot of money for, and they've they've now cut Swift's cut the budget, got rid of the manager who had the, had the financial backing that's gone through. There's so many clubs. I'm like, I think there's there's going to be a real problem in 18 months, two years time with a lot of clubs literally yeah. thinking we can't do it anymore. We're going to have to we're going to have to either either cut our losses and and, and get and yeah. leave, or uh, or they'll they'll just end up winding them up and getting going bankrupt, which is uh, not and, this, good. and this is why this is why at Farnborough, I know I know a lot of a few fans do moan about not having. Um, this striker or this player or that player, why can't we get this person in? Um, Spencer has said in, uh, enough times in his post-match interviews or any interviews that he's done that they have a budget to, that they have to stick to and, and at certain points of the time where that he's running close to that budget and, and he can't just magic money out of, out of nothing just to bring in a certain a certain player. So he has to work with what he's got. And... Um, and yeah, and yeah, and him, him, and um, Garbo, and Kevin, and and um, Rob, in the, in the running of the club in the background, are doing it the right way. I mean, they're and, that, and that's the, really, the and that's well, the, what we need to do. From from seeing it firsthand, every morning you've got volunteers that are there from six o'clock. Yeah. Kev, Bill, and, and the other guys that that help them out, and 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 that's the old school style still in play. You know, they, yeah. people like Roger and the tea bar and, and things like that. It was the kit man before a, a lot of people that that really do love the football club and yeah the first team I mean who are in a fantastic position bearing in mind they they stay they stay within their means and I think people yeah. do forget that about Farnborough I think because of the stadium and and because sometimes the, the way that we can be quite flamboyant as a club from time to time I think they don't they forget that we are very much within our our means we, we there's a lot of other clubs that have got higher wage budgets than than the, than what we have I know we hear about it a lot from whenever we hear any interviews and stuff but it's true and, and I think we have to respect that and what they did earlier on in the season beating those full-time teams yeah was 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 um, remarkable and then that's yeah. just that's that's their their sort of their yardstick if you like to go right well this is what we can do. I know we've mm. got, uh, and the difference mm. is the depth, right? So, if you've got a if you've got a, a group of players and that's your budget, likely is you've got twelve, thirteen starters that that are very good, and then you've got four, five, six players that are in there because the budget has been taken up quite a bit. And then yeah. what happens when they're injured? Well, either we get a loan deal mm. in to try and help out and and stop the the blood flow, or yeah. we we rely on the guys that potentially aren't at the standard. I don't know with the current group; I haven't seen them enough, but. That's normal. That, when I was there uh, beforehand, we had a, a good, solid group. As soon as you get four or five injuries after playing two or three games yeah. in 10, 12 days, then it's like, well, we haven't got that, what other clubs do full time or with, with stupendous wage budgets where it doesn't matter what type of player is, they're all on the same money and they're all high. So and they're, all, they're all decent footballers. But yeah, I, I think when you look at the table at the moment, I think a lot of the teams that are above Farnborough in the table of uh, we've already played and, and we've done well against. I think there's only one or two yeah. teams up there that, and usually it's the other way around. You, you, you look at a table and you yeah. go, right, well, the teams above us are the ones that beat us. It's the other way around at the moment. I think yeah, we're, yeah. we're showing with the yeah. early form that, that we can do well and, and we haven't played some teams that have been down towards the bottom end. But Yeah, yeah it does go to show that you don't have to have to spend mega bucks to get a good a good side together, I think. And I think Farnborough mm-hmm. a good example of that, really. You can you can be, you can stay within your, your set budget and have a but, uh, have, a, have a really good sort of first 11, 12, 13 players. But like like you say, Ben, I agree with you, this is where the, the squad depth issue becomes a problem and it's generally in the middle of the winter it starts to sort of rear its head and, you, and you, you, your part-time status as well comes into that as well. Um, you know, a lot of full, the full-time clubs that end up you know, uh, getting the results, whereas a part-time side may start, all of them in the league might start to struggle. So, uh, yeah, it is it is what it is, but uh, at, least, at least we know the club will be there next year, whereas some of these teams, exactly you yourself, they exactly. might not exactly. you know, and that's the same exactly. for players as well. You've got to have the right players because as we're yeah. talking about young players, we work with young players all the time. We often have a conversation with them and say, "Look, what what are you trying to achieve? I want to get I want to get to the football league. Right, great. How are we going to do that? 
well, as soon as I get an offer, I'm going to take it and I'm going to go up the level. I'm going to go up the level. All right. So someone's going to offer you probably a hundred pound more to go two leagues higher. What are you going to do? Probably going to sit on the bench. Right. But I'm going to do it because it's an extra hundred quid and it's, it's a better t-shirt than the one I've got at the moment. It's a better brand. So, but yeah. what does that get you in the long term? So you've got to earn the stripe. And, and that's the thing to get that through to, to 16, 17, 18 year olds is, is quite difficult. So you, I've got a lot of time for those guys that, that kind of will do a lot of hard graft in their early years of going out and playing step five, step six, move yeah. up to step four, move up to step three and go through the ranks. Yeah. There'd be one or two, the five or 10% that will go from step four to step one and be like, they're off, they're gone. But yeah. with, with young players now, it, it's, it is financial because of the way the world is at the moment, but also it's, it's, I want the best now. It's not, I want to work. Yeah. Towards it. I want it now. And I get that, but it's, yeah, the they, trouble. The trouble is, is it, 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 they look, it's the it's the people they look up to as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, they see the the young players in the professional leagues and in the professional games, eighteen, nineteen years old, getting the professional contract, coming out of their their academy. Will you? I don't know. For example, Crystal Palace coming out of their academy. I know they've got a really good academy, and they got earning first year contracts and straight on ten, twelve grand a year, mm. and then. It's, it, they don't seem to, I don't know, maybe you're, the kids at, at this level, at your level, don't seem to maybe understand that the difference between that, them and, and, and us. Yeah. It's not going to, it's not going to work exactly the same as what they're, the people that they're watching do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, and that's the, the other side. It's harder of it. at this level. It's harder at your level. It is, but that's the other side of it in terms of the education side that we do. So we do show, this is the reasons why at the moment we do a research project in how is media in sport affecting mm. participation levels, obviously going off topic a little bit, but they will dive into different things. And we look at what makes an academy player, how do they, so you look, there was a, uh, an example, one of the lads used today, you have a lad from Tottenham that came on for the last, I think it was the last three or four minutes. And the conversation was this morning when they walked in, what was the point of that? What does he get out of yeah. that for four minutes? And you're like, this is what you don't get. That's massive yeah. for him. And massive. Yeah, um, Mickey, something other. Mickey. That's the one, yeah. Mickey uh, Moore, is it? Mickey Moore, yeah. Mickey, yeah. Mickey Moore, yeah. 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 He's, he's like 16, minutes. 17 himself. Yeah. It comes on for the last three or four minutes at Old Trafford. All right. There was yeah. a full crowd in there and there wasn't at that point. But it's like most of them are gone. But it, it, that's a massive big deal. But it's a stepping stone yeah. for him. It's one of them yeah. things. Yeah. And, and England have done yeah. it before. We're taking young players. We didn't play it. Yeah. It's not about that. It's about. Yeah, about showing them in yeah. what major tournament looks like. So yeah. when they do come into it, this is they're they're not just falling flat on their face. They're, they're gonna yeah. yeah yeah. So it, it is things like that. But then they it's hard for them to understand. Well, if they can do that, why can't I do that? I'm doing the same things. I'm gonna, and they've got to the the percentage is, is extremely low to get to get professional through going through the academy system from nine to sixteen. It's less than one percent. But going yeah. through the non-league project program to get to pro, it moves up to about five or six percent. So they've got to understand that you've got to put the graft in, and and, and yeah, we're trying and to I think it possible. Yeah, and I think I think um, now these days, um, non-league, the word non-league is is not so much um, like a dirty word. Yeah, um, there's no there's no harm in having a good non-league career. Uh, because you can you can you can you can have a really good non league career at step step one step two playing for some really good clubs, um, and still and still have some sort of success that that way and then maybe maybe you'll get into the football league through yeah. that way but no, there's also, nothing wrong with having a, having a non league career these days it's oh, not no. like years also, ago, no. twenty years ago it was all the old boys that were dropping down because mm -hmm. they were just just try and get some one last payday or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Um, but now it's not, it's not like that now. Well, most, of the, clubs are, most, of, the, most of the good clubs are full time as well, aren't they now? So it's really, it's, it's, oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. and, yeah. and the level, the level between, if you look at the, the clubs that get promoted out of the, uh, out of the uh, national league into league two, a lot of those clubs do quite well. Um, Cause yeah. it shows yeah. the level is, is pretty similar. I think, yeah. I think now I think the national league is actually in a lot of respects better than league two. In some respects, yeah, it's, and a, a lot of people have been thing. saying that and, and showing that. I've, I've read quite a bit of that on, on Twitter. But with yeah. the, the full time clubs, you've got to think in the academy structure sometimes in a full time club, you're going to be they're going to be training every day, so there's more mm -hmm. opportunity to come involved mm -hmm. with yeah. with first team training and stuff. But yeah. we, we 
so we we try and, and champion it as much as we can and and we want to progress players as much as we can and we've got some really good talented footballers this year that we potentially haven't had in a couple of previous years that's why there's not been that many coming through but the classic yeah. question is well why have we not got people playing first team football why is no one involved well it, the level when Farnborough got promoted up from step three to step two is a massive jump in itself. Yeah. George yeah, was yeah. Playing, we use that example tonight. When George was playing in the first team structure, he was on the bench a lot. We played some cup games, but the team were at step three and it, and it was yeah. a, a, still a nice level to introduce someone to that level yeah. would last 10 to 15 minutes. At step two, it's a little bit more difficult. And so, but we're trying and hopefully we get there with a few towards the end of the season. Yeah. And, and uh, hopefully so. And, yeah. yeah. It'd be, it'd be nice to see you, uh, see you uh, knocking on Spencer's door, pick it in for some of the, some of the players to stay on the bench for a few like, men towards the end of the season. That'd be quite nice. But yeah, yeah. Like, like, so but say, at this stage, when they've only been back in, well, if you think back to a few weeks ago, they've only been back in to, in to, to campus or uh, to the club for two weeks. So it's like, well, if you start to dangle that carrot and you let them in at that point, have they earned that yeah. right to be in there yeah. in that first place? So yeah. it's a bit more difficult, I think. Maybe with the, if there's another couple of friendlies lined up mid-season when we don't have games, then that might be an opportunity to, yeah. to throw two or three of them into that to see whether they sink or swim for that 10, 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. I'm sure they wouldn't. Yeah. I'm sure when you've got players around them, they, they could be looked after quite well in that respect. Yeah. But yeah. Um, hopefully yeah. we can. And, and the other thing as well, if people want to come and watch our games we, we, when we're at home, and we, and we have our socials have really improved, to be fair. I've got to give a shout out to Leo about the, the socials because he's... He's uh, he's a lot younger than me and, and deals with the socials a lot better than I do. Um, so yeah. we've gone down the same road. Yeah, we've gone, down, road road. Yeah, we've, <laughs> we've gone down the same road as you, Ben. We um, we got we got a younger younger fan involved in our podcast purely because we he knows the technology. You know, exactly. not, he's, not that he's ever heard these days, but anyway, the shout out to you. <laughs> he's, he's in Madrid at the minute, so I don't know what he's doing there. But anyway, yeah. but with that, it shows when we're playing our games and we're at home yeah. and we have one o'clock kickoffs and. It'd be great to see as many people come down as possible. I know most people work at that point and, and all that. Yeah, I was going to say you play Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. So do, do you get um, a good a good set good set of following or? or well, we've got two teams now, so this is the first year that we've gone with a two team model because of the number of lads that we've got on on the yeah. on the program. So when one team plays, the other one is either away or they come and watch that team. So they often go yeah. behind the goal and think they're in the PRE end. But, um, <laughs> but, we, but and a lot of parents obviously come and watch as well and but things. But it'd be great to see if people are at a loose end on a Wednesday afternoon, check the socials out and, and mm. pop down. It's free to come in. Um, <laughs> if we start to get three or 400 people in, I have to start charging two quid each, but get some money in yeah. the back pocket. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it'd be great to, great to see as many people as possible. Yeah. What about the first team players? Do they get? Do they? Um, do they come and talk to the lads a lot? Um, if they're about like when they're, when they're learning or when they're training? Do they yeah, come so to... we've had a couple in the past few seasons. Reggie's come in uh, once before and and spoke, and CJ the same thing. Spencer's had a couple of chats with with academy um, with the academy group. Um, John Reed when he was when he was at the club, he was great. He used to come in and, and speak and things. So that that's quite good. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, all they've got at the club is Kev, so I'm not too sure they really want to hear from. They hear well, every time Kev walks that. in the room, they have to clap. So that, that, <laughs> when, he, when he comes through, comes through during the day and he's dropping off a delivery or he's doing a little bit of work here and there, he, they have to clap. That's his. That's his one rule. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we we get some physio physiotherapists come in and they do they do like a a day where they show them because like things like how to strap your ankle. I wouldn't know yeah. as a player. Or, mm. or a coach or whatever, but we try and put that into them that they can work that out and, and and be able to do that for themselves and things. And then we've got journalists come in and do you want to go down the sports journalist route, sports marketing? Mm. So we have a look at all different things. Yeah, it's really good actually. Yeah, it's just something I'd, yeah. uh, I'd have been quite interested in when I was I was uh, that age uh, looking mm. at that sort of stuff. Instead, instead of getting involved in uh, sort of drugs and guns and drugs and stuff like that, you know what I mean? It's a easier, better opportunities than that around. You know, not that I did. Um, <laughs> no, Simon, no, Simon's never, never, never been involved in anything like that. No, not no, even no. a plastic, not even a plastic gun. No, I put water pistol. <laughs> yeah, that's better work at these days. But bubbles, no, it's, it's good. That, it's good that um, it's good that uh, that you that the course that these guys, these kids are doing, is showing them that not it's not just playing the playing avenue that they they, they can go down. There's many other different avenues within the sport that they can that they can go go down, and and some of them. I'm sure you're. I'm sure you've seen that some of them will have um, a genuine interest in in different areas of um, of the game. 
Yeah, hundred percent. And like, as again, they, they the sports coaching. So in the first and second year, the, the first years will lead a coaching session, and you've got to think how daunting that is. They're, they're players, mm. they're young players, and then they they're learning how to become a coach. And it's mm. a bit different to the coaching courses that you can do because I think the FA Level One introduction to football is basically mm. you turn up, put a cone down on the pitch, they give you a certificate, and you go. So it's like well done. Yeah. But it's a bit more different about how how you get across your point and how you would coach and and your, how you want to have your own style and, and personality about when you coach. Um, and then when you're in, in the second year, they coach one-to-one. And then they have a, a six-week training program that they will coach for for other players. And, and at mm. the end of that, you get a lot of guys that come out of it going, actually, I think, well, last year's group, 85% went off to university. The second years that left, they Very went well. off to university, which is great. And that's the first yeah. year that's happened because we pushed that quite a bit. And they've gone off to go and do sports science or sports coaching or other things. Um, we've got four of them that are remained with us this year that are doing a third year through our education provider. So we can't get rid of them. So it's like, it's great. Um, they're, pushing, but yeah, they're pushing for that first team spot. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, and, and, and we've got others that like doing the, the analysis on games. Yeah. And that's obviously fast forwarded massively in the last few years. Yeah. And yeah. we've got some technology that we're able to use and, and we can look at the VOs from the first team games and do some analysis on that and send that to them. And it, it works really well. Good, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that's good. Right. I think we'll wrap it up. It's been great. It's been uh, really good, actually. Oh, do you know what we were thinking about before we start the episode? What if we're going to talk to Ben about? He's going to be going on about this. Now. But actually, it's been, uh, it's been really interesting, actually. Well, I'm yeah. normally a man of a few words as well. I don't normally speak that much. So I do apologise. <laughs> yeah, no, no, so I'll run it it's, it's, I, I put that on myself, really. I'm just so welcoming and a charming guy. You know? Absolutely. I, bring, I bring it out in people, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it brings out something in people. It's not this not, it's not it's warmth and it's charm. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just, he's always been jealous, Ben. Ignore him. Ignore him. <clears throat> so it's a, it's a but, uh, Ben, it's, it's, it's been really, it's been really, it has been really good uh, chatting to you and, and learning about um, the, the academy side of things at, at the club, which I'm sure a lot of people didn't, don't really know what, what it is what it is and what's going on but um but yeah so anything anything that the, the academy um put out on on social on the socials we will gladly uh, we already do anyway but we will gladly um keep retweeting and commenting and, and stuff like that um just for just for all the, the people listening ben uh, just let us let everyone know um where they can find find you on social media so it's uh, farmer fc academy or farmer football yeah. academy um that is the the handle i think I mean, I just yeah. need to check though. So as I say, I'm not the one that deals with it on the okay. social media. Farmer Football Academy on, on Instagram okay. uh, and the same on the Twitter as well. Excellent. Okay, there you go, everybody that's watching. Um, that's where if if anyone's got any any kids that are interested in football and the higher learning, and then that's where you need to go. Contact the yeah, club. Contact Ben. You can come in if anyone does have any questions. They they not on social media like that. They can either ask on a match day, ask the guys upstairs yeah. in the platinum lounge or or around the club. Then they will forward you, you on your details to us, and we can get we can get in touch with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll be putting. The we'll we'll do that as well. We'll do that if any if anyone that's watching that a, a company, they can come and approach us as well, and uh, yeah. and uh, give us give us your details, and um, I'll make sure Simon doesn't pocket the details, and I'll pass them <laughs> on to you, Ben, and and or or Leo. Is it Leo? Yeah, Leo as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll do that. We'll definitely do that. If you are, if word of warning, if you're heading up to the Platinum Lands, you'll probably find Alan drunk behind the bar. So just be, just be there. <laughs> yeah. no, no, don't, no, don't, no, don't, don't approach life. me, and don't approach me when I've got a burger in my hand because I'll probably attack you. So yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. be welcoming. That, but that first one, that first one about me being drunk behind the bar was a definite bold lie. But yes, do not approach Simon if he has a burger in his hand because he will attack you. Yeah. The loaded chips are very good. I tried yeah, them. It's, it's all, yeah. it's all yeah. Silver's Kitchen's done us proud. Oh, Silver's Kitchen, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah very I nice. Was, I had to say that though, but I did actually genuinely like them as well. It was it was very nice. But she did say you've got to you've got to bring it up at some point. I completely forgot <laughs> for the last three and a half hours that we've been speaking. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was uh, <laughs> I remembered now. <laughs> It is very good. It is very good. Uh, it, uh, uh, we've 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 had it had it there a couple of times, haven't we? Um, especially the um, uh, what was it? The, I have the the uh, pork pork, pork, yeah. pork, pork, pork yeah. chips. Yeah, they are yeah. absolutely brilliant. I, I, so, I, 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 I did. Just be careful afterwards. Don't go into the wrong door because then you find yourself in the home dressing room with pulled pork and chips. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that was, uh, that was Alan's excuse when he got chucked out there the other day. He's, he's always trying to get in there, just trying to get people <laughs> out, so get the team sheet out early. He's, he's terrible. <laughs> That's probably why Mike's not talking to him, to be honest with you. <laughs> Fed up with him. Fed up. Every time he turns around, he's there. You know what I mean? He's like, he's like a like a, a, a fat shadow. <laughs> fat shadow. Yeah, nice one. Um, but yeah, no, brilliant foods and, and very good value value for money as well. Uh, it should be said as well. But uh, yeah, no, sorry. Um, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still thinking about those ships. Yeah. <laughs> that was I then for a minute. <laughs> I'm, I'm really ben, like, yeah. a minute. Ben, it's been uh, brilliant um, talking to you. Um, uh, and good luck with uh, with everything coming up with the games and, and the trial date that's coming up next month. But, um... Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night starting with, yeah. Good luck with that game. Yeah. Like, sounds like you might need it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I really appreciate you letting me on, uh, uh, inviting me on. I, I appreciate it a lot, and uh, hopefully people have got more of an idea about about how the, how the academy works. Um, yeah. But as I say, we're, we're very open. If anyone's got any questions they want to ask, then we've given the avenues to go down and, and just get in touch with us. As I say, we're there, we're there every day. So yeah. uh, you're full time. So you're there all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come down and see us. Happy days. Dream job. Dream yeah, brilliant. Job. Brilliant, yeah. So don't go away, Ben. Um, we'll we'll have a little quick, quick chat afterwards when we come off air. But uh, it seems to be taking. Uh, thanks for. I didn't say at the beginning as well. Uh, this episode has been sponsored by Chartec Consulting, uh, taking your business visions and turning them into innovative reality. For more information, contact uh, visit chartecconsulting.co.uk. Simon, say good night. Cheerio. Thanks very much. Uh, see you next week. Thank you, uh, Ben, and thanks, uh, everybody uh, that's been watching us on YouTube. Um, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll be back uh, very soon with another podcast.